Mr. Spence, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Call Dr. Vecht, please. Dr. Vecht? Yes, sir, if you would, please. You Dr. Wecht? Yes, Your Honor. Have you been sworn as a witness? Yes, I have, Fine. Your Honor. Thank you. If you would, please, come forward. Take your seat up here in the jury box. Court, please. You may proceed. Doctor. Tell them who you are. <laughs> Dr. Cyril Wecht, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm a pathologist specializing in anatomic, clinical, and forensic pathology. Thank you. Would you tell the folks um, whether or not you were part of the President's, uh, the House Committee's panel? Yes, I was, Mr. Spence, one of the nine forensic pathologists who had been convened by the Select Committee of Assassinations uh, by the House of Representatives. And uh, you served with Dr. Petty, who the jury have already heard? Yes. Did you agree with the conclusions that Dr. Petty gave to the jury in this case? No, not with what I would consider to be the principal, relevant, and important issues in this case. All right. Now, Doctor, let's get with what the facts are in this case. Why is everybody concerned? Just explain as briefly as you can why everybody's concerned about whether there was one shot that went through both the president and Governor Conley, or two shots. I mean, what possible difference does it make? Explain. The reason for the problem was this. They got the alleged murder weapon, this Manneker Carcano single action, uh, non-automatic weapon, and it was determined that in the hands of the most skilled marksman that the government could find, it took 2.3 seconds from shot to shot. They then looked at the Zapruder film, and they saw when Kennedy was hit the first time, then when Connolly was hit, and they determined that there was only a lapse of time somewhere between one half to one and a half seconds. So it was then humanly impossible. They had already made the commitment to themselves that it was a sole assassin, Lee Harvey Oswald. They then had to find a way to fit all that in. The way they found was the so-called single bullet theory, which we prefer to refer to as the magic bullet theory. That is the theory that holds that the same bullet that went through the president's back and out his neck, re-entered Connolly's back, went through his chest, broke his rib, exited from the front of his chest, re-entered the back of his wrist, caused a comminuted or shattered fraction of the distal end of the radius, the heavy bent, dense bone that comes from the elbow to the wrist, exited from the front of the wrist, re-entered the left thigh, fell out of the left thigh, was not noticed by anybody until a few hours afterwards at Parkland Hospital when a maintenance man was trying to get to the men's room, found his way blocked by stretchers from the emergency room, moved the stretcher, and lo and behold, there was Commission Exhibit 399, the magic bullet. Without the single bullet theory, there has to be more than one person shooting. I'm not talking about who or what. And without, their, without their believing in the single bullet theory, the time won't work out. Is that it? That's it, exactly. Let's take a look at uh, what's on the board. Explain now what this uh, exhibit shows, Doctor. Yes. This exhibit shows <clears throat> from our left, the juries, President Kennedy and his you wife. Stand down. Certainly. May I use this, Your yes, Honor? Please. Step yes, please. Right Step on this Don't side. Don't use it on me. Thank you. President and Mrs. Kennedy, Governor Connolly, Mrs. Connolly, these are jump seats in the rear compartment of the car. <coughs> Greer and Kellerman, the Secret Service agents. This is a simple schematic illustration to demonstrate how a bullet would have been moving if it had been fired from the sixth floor window of the Texas School Book Depository building. It would have been coming from up downward. It would have been coming from right to left and from rear to front. The bullet <clears throat> entered the back of President Kennedy and then it moved to the front and it moved to the left and it exited from the midline of his neck. That bullet did not strike any dense bone. 
There was nothing to deflect it whatsoever, nothing to alter its path. It was traveling at approximately 2,000 feet per second muzzle velocity. When it exited from the front of the president's throat, it would have continued in a straight line. There is simply no way possible for that bullet to have entered Governor Connolly's posterior right axillary area, which is a fancy medical way for saying behind the right armpit. If it hit him behind the right armpit, it would have had to have come out of the president's neck and in some way veered back to the right and then stopped and turned around and started once again in a path toward the left. Bullets do not react that way, not even in comic books. <laughs> Folks, show me exhibit 67 again, please. What does it show you, doctor? This is Zapruder frame 230. The president has been hit. Both of his arms have come up, one toward his mouth, the other toward his throat. Governor Conley seated directly in front of the president, as you can see. At this point, the president has been hit <clears throat> approximately one to one and a half seconds already, sometime behind the so-called Stemmons Freeway sign. Please note that Governor Conley is holding a large-sized white Texas Stetson type hat. Now, and notice please, his let me right, right hand. That's this hat. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. He's holding it in his hand. And he has it clutched between his fingers and his thumb. He's already been hit, supposedly, according to Dr. Petty. Under the single bullet theory, approximately a second to a second and a half has elapsed, and Governor Conley, under the definition of the single bullet theory, has been hit through the chest, through the wrist, the bone has been shattered, the radial nerve that permits the thumb to hold things in apposition has been almost completely severed, the bullet's gone into the left thigh, and there he sits, continuing to hold the hat and to look forward. A remarkable accomplishment. Thank you. Now let's take a look at Exhibit 278. Would you come over here, doctor? We're not getting much uh, exercise anyway here in this trial. What do we got here? Uh, what this shows is a composite of several bullets. Bullets that were fired in an experiment conducted under the auspices and at the direction of the Warren Commission in 1964 at an army base in Maryland near Washington, D.C. They fired 6.5 millimeter copper jacketed lead core military type ammunition first into cotton wadding, striking nothing. Same as this gun. Same, same ammunition as this, out of exact this Exact same ammunition and from the same kind of weapon. Not Oswald's weapon, but another Mannlicher Carcano. These two bullets were fired into cotton wadding, striking nothing. Notice the deformity at the base. This bullet went through a goat carcass, breaking one rib of a goat. Notice it's widening. It even looks like a different bullet, but it's the same ammunition. That deformity is caused by the impact against one rib of a goat. And notice the extrusion of the lead core at the base. This bullet went through the wrist of a human cadaver, breaking the radius of a human cadaver, the same bone that was broken in Governor Connolly. In other words, they wanted to, to simulate, to reproduce the fractures that had occurred in the governor. So this one was to simulate the rib fracture, and this one was to simulate the wrist fracture. This bullet is not involved in this case. It's the same ammunition, not involved in this case. Thank you. Uh, and over here, a little off the screen, is Commission Exhibit 399, the so-called stretcher bullet, which, according to the government's theory, broke both the rib and the wrist in Governor Connolly, but emerged in near pristine condition, the only de slight deformity at the base, otherwise the bullet completely intact. And yet here are the results of their experiment, and they chose the sample or representative bullets. I did not choose them. I'm Thank waving you. my objection to all this, Your Honor. That's I understand. Obviously, totally and completely improper. He's given a summation to the jury, but I'm waving the objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's well, soon, let's now, soon enjoy himself. Disregard the remark. Let's go. Let me, uh, let me ask you... Uh, did you check the autopsy that was, that was produced in this case, the autopsy uh, proceeding, and what, what they did at the autopsy? Yes. What did you find? 
one of the most uh, incomplete, superficial, inadequate, inept, forensic pathologically incompetent medical legal autopsies I've ever seen. Explain why. The autopsy, for example, measures the locations of the wounds in relationship to other anatomic landmarks instead of relating them, as we always do, to the top of the head and the midline of the body. The um, brain subsequently was not fully examined. Various organs were not commented upon. The um, entire description was quite meager. All right. When you were called upon, as a part of the committee that Mr. Dr. Petty was involved with, to make your determinations, was the necessary evidence presented to you by the government for you to do that? For example, was the brain there? No. That's the, do the you brain, need the brain? Yes. The head wounds, you would need the brain. Why? Because as you would have to use your eyes and uh, other um, measuring devices for determination of bullet wound characteristics in different parts of the body, so would it be the same with regard to the brain. In this case, even more so, because the brain was not examined at the time of the autopsy. It was fixed in formalin, which was a proper thing to do. But two weeks later, on December 6th, in the supplemental examination, they did not then section the brain in stepwise fashion to examine it. They said that in order to preserve the specimen, they were not going to do that. So the brain was never examined in this case. So they told you it was put in formalin? That's what they said in they the They said it was preserved? Yes. And then when you asked for it, were you provided the brain? No, uh, the brain is not available. Uh, did you look for the brain? Oh, I had looked for it many times in many ways before, and the panel again uh, had asked about it. It uh, was not available. Do you, um, do you have an opinion uh, as to what occurred in the Zabruder film when the president is, is larched back? You, are, are we permitted to believe what we see there? Well, <clears throat> it'll be up to uh, the court and the jury. Uh, the uh, the um, film uh, Zapruder 313 shows the president being driven backward and to the left with substantial force at the moment of impact with the head wound. What do you consider that force to have been caused by? By a gunshot wound. From which direction? Well, the directionality in terms of the movement would be most consistent with a shot from the right side. Show, show the jury with your finger. If I am President Kennedy and I am moving down Elm Street and I'm shot in the head <clears throat> with a high-speed velocity long gun and I go backward and to the left like this, that is most consistent with a force of substantial nature coming in from the right side, the jury being in that area of the right side. Would that be consistent? backwards. Would that be consistent with a shot coming from the grassy knoll? Yes, it would be. You may examine. Cyril, um, I respect you. You know, you've got a pretty good background, don't you? Spent a lot of years in school. But you're... You're known as, as the darling of the conspiracy buffs in this country, oh, aren't please. you? Please, that's, that's impossible. Oh, wait a minute. You, you asked him to give a summation to the jury, and I can't ask him if he's a darling? Please, well, I asked him for his testimony, Your Honor, and I think that that's demeaning of a witness well, of this character. Ask him if he's a member of a particular committee. Sustain as to the darling Doctor, part. even though from a professional perspective you don't think too much of the autopsy surgeons, you do agree 100% with their findings, to wit that the bullet wound to the president's upper right back and the bullet wound to the back of the president's head were both entry wounds, not exit wounds, and hence the bullets were fired from the rear. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, let's go on to the next question now. No final summation. I'm going to be doing that. Was it just accidental on their part that they came to the same identical conclusion you came to? That's not the same identical conclusion. Okay. That's just a part. Dr. Wecht, in a 1974 article... 1974 article for, for Forensic Science, page 128.
Did you say this? So far as the available medical evidence shows, all shots were fired from the rear. No support can be found for theories which postulate gunmen to the front or right front of the presidential car. Did you write those words, doctor? Yes, exactly. Okay. Available medical evidence. All That's right. the phrase, right. Mr. Bugliosi. Available medical evidence. He'll have some opportunity on redirect. Just answer my questions. You know, I think he is, and I, I, I don't think he's being fair with this witness, Your Honor. Somehow, so you, when he gives an answer that he doesn't like, then he admonishes the witness and scolds him. And I think a witness ought to be able to answer sorry. without being scolded Dr. by Mr. Overruled. Bugliosi. I think Dr. Wick's handling himself all right. I think sir. he's doing all right, too. Thank you. As far as the brain, doctor, uh, you're well aware, are you not, that after interviewing or taking depositions from over 30 people close to the matter, the House Select Committee that you were on, the investigators concluded that the president's brother, Robert Kennedy, who had told people he feared his brother's brain might conceivably be placed on public display years from now, they came to the conclusion that it was he who was responsible for the disappearance of his brother's brain. You're aware of that? That's the conclusion of the House Select Committee investigators. They suggested it. Okay. But I take it you don't accept this possibility. You well, smell I, I have no way of knowing. Well, you kind of smell a rat here, don't you? I have no way of knowing. All right. Let's go on. Head snap to the rear, doctor. I believe you testified that that bullet could have come from the front. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Well, right, right side, I prefer, Mr. Bugliosi. You prefer? Right side. Yeah, but that's not Mr. He's not happy oh, with no, that. Oh, no, he did. I, he did say right side, and I yeah. said right side, and he said grassy knoll, and I said yes, that's yeah. the right side. But you want him to go home happy, don't you? Oh, please. And he's that's, talking about the I grassy knoll. I have no knoll. relationship oh. to Mr. Okay. Spence. That's so bad. Jury will disregard that. So awful perfect. bad. Okay. But the grassy knoll is to the right front. Somewhat to the front, more to the side. Okay. Well, doctor, since you agree that there's no medical evidence of a bullet striking President Kennedy from the front or right front, no medical evidence, to what do you attribute the head snap to the rear then? There's no I, said, I said, as you asked me before, Mr. Bugliosi, that the medical evidence available, I'll repeat for you, sir, that the left side of the brain was never opened, was never sectioned. So we don't know what was there. The great majority of the metal fragments inside the brain were never tested. Indeed, the large piece that was embedded in the bone in the back and a fairly substantial piece embedded toward the frontal part of the skull, those two were not removed and were not tested. So we don't know a lot of things about what would happen, what happened because of the incompleteness okay. of the examination and the unavailability now, of the evidence. Do you believe that the two bullets that struck President Kennedy from behind were not fired from the southeasternmost window of the sixth floor, but from a lower floor? My own analysis, as set forth in an article published, I think, in 1974, indicated that if the shots uh, came from behind, and I believe that they had, that at least one of the shots would have been more likely to have come from around the second floor of the Texas School Book Depository Building and more down toward the other end of the building. That was my own analysis. All right. Uh, taking a look at this chart right here, Cyril. Uh, Your Honor, d just, I don't mean to be picky, but somehow it seems to me that during the course of this trial, we have always tried to show respect for people, and wouldn't it be proper for yes. doctors to be called Address doctors? Him as Dr. Oh, West. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doctor. All right. Now, Doctor, if the bullet was coming on a downward path as it entered the presidential limousine, as you say it was, is that correct? Yes. All right. And it missed Governor Connolly. Is that correct? Yes. Why didn't it hit the driver of the car or do any damage to the car, doctor? A couple of things. The straight line in that open limousine could have taken it out over the left side of the car. No. And, and as the line shows, it would have and could have indeed missed the driver. Secondly, no, wait, I didn't. It's coming on a downward path, Ciro. I mean, Amazing. doctor, doctor, I'm sorry. It's coming on a downward path into the presidential limousine, goes through the president's body, misses Governor Connolly, and ma magically also misses the driver and doesn't do any damage to the presidential Wait, limousine. Wait, just a moment. I did not say that that bullet missed all of these people completely or that it missed the car. Well, whom did you it know miss? that there were fragments found in the car, Mr. Bugliosi. You said the bullet passed on a straight line through the president's body. Absolutely. Passed through soft tissue. That's so right. So that bullet came out pristine. That's right. 
the bullet fragments found in the front seat of this car, doctor, were bullet fragments, very, very damaged, very, very small. What yes. happened to that pristine bullet when it came through President Kennedy's body? What Who happened? Hit? What happened to the third bullet under the Warren Commission theory, Mr. Bugliosi? Where is it? You're asking me to be responsible no. for the bullets I want in this to know case? What happened to your bullet, I'm doctor. asking you what happened to the third bullet yes. of the Warren Commission report. Yeah, please, you don't want to doctor, my question. doctor. No, please. I don't have. Yeah. I, I can't tell you where all the bullets well, are. Doctor, I didn't conduct the investigation. Yeah, the prosecution has its own magic bullet. Okay, Mr. Bugliosi, no. please. Dr. Wecht, I'm going to ask you, please. I, I know that we've got some time constraints, but both of you sure like to talk at the same time, and Mrs. Zahn is still working for the court, Doctor. and she can't take you both. So let's just slow it down just a little bit. Okay? Dr. Wecht, yes, thank you. you've suggested, Doctor, that maybe the bullets that entered um, from the right front, if there were any bullets from the right front, were synchronized, right? That at the very moment that the bullet was fired from the rear, someone else may have fired from the... Uh, the side or the uh, right front, is that yes. correct? Yes. A, a bullet, sir. Yeah. A now, bullet. how would the synchronization have taken place, Doctor? Oh, that's very simple. Was someone looking at a stopwatch with a rifle and can, also looking through the crosshairs? You can do it according to a point in time. You can do it from a prearranged signal. You can do it with a stopwatch. So they would be looking at the stopwatch and holding the rifle and at the same time looking through their sights. Is that correct? In whatever way it's done, I haven't uh, done much shooting like that Have recently. Have you thought about it, Doctor? Yes, I've thought about it. Because... Not a problem. Okay, because, not a problem with the right kind okay, of watch okay. and shooting with a good weapon. Not a problem. Because it would have had to have hit within one-eighteenth of a second. Is that correct? Of yes. Final, you agree with that? I agree. Well, yes. not necessarily with one-eighteenth, but I agree within a, a fraction and a small fraction of a second. Yes, it's I do extremely, agree. Extremely, extremely remote. Isn't that right, Doctor? I would say that it is a remote possibility, but a physical possibility to be considered. Okay. Well, doctor, by definition, it seems to me that you are saying that if the other eight pathologists disagreed with you, and they did, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Seems to me, doctor, that by necessary implication, they are either hopelessly and utterly incompetent or they deliberately suppress the truth from the American public. Is that correct? There is a third alternative, which would be a hybrid to some extent of the deliberate suppression, sir, to some extent a subconscious desire not to um, injure or aggrieve the government from whom they look for various research grants cool. and appointments and lectureships at the Armed Forces okay. Institute of Pathology and a who are variety some, of other... Who are areas. some of these other doctors? Aren't they doctors of good reputation and standing in the medical community? You bring them here, sir, okay. and present them to the jury. I can only present my testimony, show the pictures okay. for his honor and the jury. You bring the other eight in and let them okay. present their so views. So of the nine pathologists, Dr. Weck, you're the only one that had the honor and the integrity and the professional responsibility to tell the truth to the American people. Is that correct, doctor? I'll prefer to put okay, it this way. You. I'm no the only questions. one no who questions. had the no further courage questions. to say that the king was nude and had no clothes okay. on. Yes. No further That's questions. Correct. All right, to redirect. Thank you. Just a couple of questions, Dr. Wecht. Are you... You've been asked by Mr. Bugliosi to try to explain what happened to the magic bullet as it was fired into the president's limousine. Do you even believe that the magic bullet was fired into the president's limousine? I have much doubts about where and when that bullet was fired, how it was found at Parkland Hospital, and uh, how it may relate to other individuals who played a key role in this case who were seen at Parkland Hospital that afternoon. Are you aware of the fact that Mr. Ruby Jack Ruby was at the Parkland Hospital that afternoon? Yes, I have Mr. Ruby very much in mind. And do you think that that uh, bullet, 399, is a true and genuine bullet that was fired at the time the president was murdered? Or do you think, in, in reasonable medical probability, based on reasonable medical probability, that it's a fake and a fraud? I have much doubt as to whether that bullet went through any of the individuals that day. If it did, it would be consistent only with a bullet having gone through the president's neck. It would not be consistent, for the reasons I've given, with a bullet that would have destroyed four to five inches of the governor's rib and caused a comminuted fracture of the governor's wrist. No further questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Wick.